Good day, subscribers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am Jeremy. This is the Financial Education Channel, and today we're talking about five stocks that went up massively in 2016, guys. And the purpose of this video is to look at these five stocks and see if, if we can find some similarities on why they went up so massively. That way, now in 2017 and going into future years, maybe we can see some things with other stocks and say, well, that is about to happen with this company, and that worked out for all these companies that went up massively in this year, there's a good chance that my stock might go up or that stock over there that I need to buy, they're going to probably go up a lot, guys. So we're going to view some similarities here between them. And you'll definitely start to see a trend that's happening, guys, a trend that's going to kind of happen here, guys. So hit a thumbs up if you enjoy this, guys. Let's just get right into this. So number one stock we're talking about out of all these is NVIDIA. NVIDIA went up over 225% in 2016 guys absolutely ridiculous now why didn't the video go up so much it's incredible so one look at their way the way their revenue went up they went from doing five billion dollars in revenue into fiscal year 2016 to fiscal year 2017 they did 6.9 billion dollars guys so a 38 percent increase in revenue that's fabulous but that's not all you need more than just a revenue increase to get a stock to go up that much Look at gross margin. Gross margin expanded 270 basis points, guys, from a 56.1 gross margin, which is ridiculously high, to now a 58.8% gross margin. Guys, this is insane. This is absolutely insane. Operating income. This is huge. Up 159%, guys, from 747 million in 16 to 1.9 billion last year. And then we have net income, the thing that matters more than anything, up 171%. This is insane, guys. Uh, from $614 million in fiscal year 2016 to fiscal year 2017 of $1.6 billion, guys. So, so far, we can see from the financials alone, this stock deserved to go up massively, guys. When you have net income up 171%. Year on year, your stock's probably gonna fly to the moon. That's the bottom line, guys. And let's look at a couple words here by management on, on why they basically had a record year and whatnot. Well, this is from the CEO speaking. We had a great finish to a record year with continued strong growth across all our businesses, said Jen Sung Hong, founder and chief executive officer of NVIDIA. Our GPU computing platform is enjoying rapid adoption in artificial intelligence, cloud computing, gaming, and autonomous vehicles, guys. They have so much going for them, NVIDIA. I mean, from the gaming side, from the cloud computing side, they're also in all the future Tesla models for the next few years at least. As far as the self-driving mechanisms and whatnot, that all has to do with NVIDIA chips. In artificial intelligence, the ability for the car to learn a situation, guys. This is ridiculous stuff NVIDIA is on. And that is how you get an amazing revenue growth like that. And the mainly amazing bottom line growth like they had. The net income has just been absolutely astonishing, guys. So that's the number one stock we're looking at. Number two stock we're looking at is Freeport McMoran, which is one of the biggest mining companies in the world. Their stock was up over 100% last year, guys. So, uh, let's just look at what the CEO here said here at the beginning. During 2016, we took aggressive actions in response to market conditions to restore our balance sheet strength. I'm pleased to report that we, are, we were successful in reducing our net debt by over $8 billion during the year while completing a major expansion of our world-class Carol Verde mine. I am proud that our global team for their accomplishments in proving our metal. And then I talk about it a little bit more. But mainly, look at the revenues here, guys. We're going to look all the way in the right hand column there. Um, revenues went up a little bit. They did not go up massively. From they did fourteen point six billion dollars in two thousand fifteen to 14.8 so a, a small slight revenue increase but look at recently to the left hand columns there revenue has expanded a lot faster about an 800 million dollar increase from the three months december 31st ending 2015 to 2016 guys so things are expanding faster but the main key here with with freeport mcmoran 
I was looking here at the at the net income, guys. The net income is the main thing to look at with this one. So they they lost eleven dollars and thirty two cents per share in two thousand fifteen, uh, in dollar amount that's around twelve billion dollars. It's ridiculous. But this past year, they only only lost two dollars and ninety six cents. So things got a lot better. Lost about four billion dollars. But the main thing is the last three months, all of a sudden, now they're profitable. They eked out a $292 million profit, a $0.22 cent, uh, you know, gain on profit. So with Freeport, it's a situation where their, their, their top line is starting to get back a lot better, especially more recently, as we saw $800 million increase there. Commodities prices have improved. The mining operations have improved. They sold a lot of debt down because they've sold a lot of assets away from that. So the, the risk of bankruptcy is now much less for the company or, or a huge type of restructuring. So they're in a, a firm position, and they went from losing $14 billion dollars you know, one year is $14 billion, or excuse me, $12 billion uh, last year, to all of a sudden this year, they, they lose a lot less, well, still $4 billion, still a huge loss, but the main key is this past quarter, they actually eked out a profit. So this is a company that's going from about $12 billion loss to now possibly being a profitable company, and when you can get that type of change to happen, guys, your stock's going to fly high, and that's exactly why Freeport McMoran was up over 100% last year. Next stock up here, guys, Applied Materials. This is, they have to do with a lot of semiconductor components, making the materials for them, iPhones, a lot of different things, guys, with Apple and, and a, lot of, a lot of electronics companies. Their stock was up over 74% last year. Now, look at their net sales here, guys. Uh, we're going to look all the way at the 12 months, uh, so all the way in the right-hand column. They did $9.6 billion in 2015 in net sales. Last year they did $10.8 billion. Now that's a nice that's a nice increase. But once again, that's not the main reason why this stock went up. If you go down and look at toward the bottom there, guys, are on earnings per share, or we can look at the net income line. Let's actually look at the net income line. They did $1.3 billion in net income in, in 2015 for the 12 months end. Whereas this past year, they did over $1.7 billion in, in uh, net income, guys. So this is another situation that the top line moved nice, absolutely. But it's the bottom line, that net income increasing like that, guys, that pushed this stock up over 70% last year, guys. Starting to see some trends here. Next stock up, we have Quanta Services. This is an oil and gas company. Their stock was up over 70% last year. So revenues... Uh, slightly up. We're looking at all the way in the right-hand column once again. 12 months ended December 31. They did $7.5 billion in 2015. This past year, they did $7.6 billion. Not a huge difference there, guys. Not a huge difference at all. But then we go ahead and we look at the at the net income. Now, there's, there's a couple things I'm going to explain to you guys here. It's very important. Uh, amounts attributable to common stock. So net income in 2015, the, the most right-hand column there, they had $120 million, right? And if you look at the next column over the left-hand column, they did $198 million this past year. Now you're going to see another line uh, below that, which is net income or loss from discon discontinued operations. This is not that important when it comes to the, the bottom line net income because this is a one-time sale of assets. It's like me saying, okay, I'm going to sell my photography and videography business. I'm going to sell my financial education channel. Uh, okay, now I have no in income from that. You know, I just sold that and I got money for it. And then that basically has to go to the shareholders at that point. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean that much in the end, guys, because it's just a one-time sale. You're just getting that money at that time. You have to put it in there so it makes things look better, but it's not really a true, it's not really a, a true thing to look for in the future as an investor. Whereas you got to really compare it from continuing operations. They did a 62 cents. Now we're looking at the next column down, 62 cents in earnings per share, basically, uh, if you're just taking the continued operations, which actually matter, whereas this past year they did $1.26, guys, so they basically doubled up the amount of net income they're making in the amount of earnings per share. And then we go ahead and we look at what they're expecting for this upcoming year. Quanta expects revenues for the full year 2017 to range between 7.9 and 8.5 billion, which would be okay increase there, but not nothing ex outstanding. And diluted earnings per share from continued operations attributable to common stock to be $1.52 to $1.77, guys. 
So they're going from, from 2015, right, making $0.62 cents profit to this year they made $1.26, so they basically doubled it up. And now next year they're expecting $1.52 to $1.77, guys. So we're seeing drastic expansion in their net income and the amount of money they actually have coming to them, guys. So this is another reason why this stock is up huge. Oh, another trend, that net income growing insane. And then the stock grows insane, guys. Let's look at another one, stock number five here, Best Buy. Best Buy was up over, or, or excuse me, around 40% in this past year. Their stock actually dropped quite a bit at the very end of the year, which which if they would have stayed up, they would have been up 60 plus percent, but neither the stay still a, still a nice uh, stock gain, 40%. You can't you know, close your eyes about that. So revenue, once again, let's look at the, the right-hand column, nine months end it. So $25.9 billion and uh, $25.9 billion. So they basically revenue is stagnant at Best Buy. But then we go down and look at net earnings, which is toward the bottom there. $418 million it did in 2015 for the nine months end it. Where's this pa this past year? Six hundred and twenty-one million dollars. There, guys. Let's look at, uh, at the uh, diluted earnings per share. A dollar eighteen in two thousand fifteen on the all the way right hand column. A dollar ninety-two this past year. So with a Best Buy, what do we have? Another situation where revenue is not necessarily growing that fast, but there's so much more profitable. So much more profitable, guys. The net income grew. So all five of these stocks, every single one. What did they all have in common? Outstanding net income growth, outstanding earnings per share growth, not necessarily the revenue growth super strong, not necessarily, you know, they raised a dividend a ton or, or they did a share buyback or something like that. Not necessarily a big investor came in, not a lot of those things. Net income going up drastically. That is why these stocks went up massively. That is why, guys. So when I turn out and I look at the landscape and I think about, uh, I think about like let's say my two biggest investments, GoPro and Win. What do those two stocks have in common that these stocks do? Uh, well, with GoPro, they lost a massive amount of money this year, or excuse me, last year they lost a massive amount of money last year. This year they're expected to be profitable. Oh, oh, that's that's something in common here, guys. So once they prove that out. What's probably going to happen with the stock? It's probably, never for sure, but it's probably going to do a lot what the same these stocks did. Go up massively in 2017. Wind Resorts, my second stock. What's changed with that one? Um, well, they opened their, their flagship resort in Macau now. So their net income is going to be up drastically in 2017 versus 2016, guys. So what's probably going to happen with that stock? It's probably going to go up massively just like these ones did because that bottom line goes up a great deal, guys. So those are my two biggest investments. And now you can kind of see my framework on how I think and, and the way I think. And obviously a lot more goes into investing than, you know, and I preach a lot of things to you guys that, that you have to, you know, value a ton of things. But I'm just speaking from a strict standpoint of basing the stocks that went up massively last year versus and what were the common themes of it? Bottom line, net income growing drastically. What's the common theme with my two biggest investments? That net income is going to raise drastically with both of them, guys. So that is how I view these things. I hope this kind of opened up your guys' mind on, on looking at stocks in the future and paying so close attention to where's net income going because where net income's going, it's probably going to be where your stock's going. If it goes down, your stock's probably going to go down. If it goes up, especially if it goes up drastically, you're probably going to make a lot of money, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you just came across this channel, you may want to subscribe. We talk personal finance in the channel. We talk entrepreneurship. I'm an actual business owner. I give away a ton of my business tips. We talk the stock market the most of everything, guys. Thank you for watching and have a great day.